The following program is a personally conducted training seminar by President and CEO of Market America, J.R. Reidinger. J.R. has personally built international sales organizations in excess of 35,000 distributors by using the techniques he teaches here called the Basic Five. By using these proven techniques, JR shows you the how to do's and what to do's of building a successful network marketing business. The more you listen to these tapes, the easier it will be for you to learn the principles of the Basic Five. So without any further delay, let's join JR right now. Okay, I guess we're about ready. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate everybody for being out here today. This is my favorite type of meeting because this is uh, the grassroots, nuts and bolts, uh, power behind the business. You know, people get into the business and I think they come in with excitement and expectation. Uh, they don't really know what's happening. They think that they're gonna go out and make uh, $300,000 a, a year and a month. And uh, two or three months later, they're not making three $300,000 per month. They might be somewhere in between. <coughs> But I think it's, uh, unless someone already has all the answers before they come in the business, and have already done it successfully, uh, it's unlikely that everything's just going to fall into place. But how do you explain everything someone needs to know at an opportunity meeting or at their first seminar? I think that uh, certainly there's, there's levels that we reach psychologically, mentally, growth-wise in the business. And very quickly, uh, those people that persist to get through what I call round one, need the information on how to build an organization. And that's really what it comes down to. We become teachers in the business, and we need a system to build the business and to create duplication. But I think before we're ready to learn that, before our, uh, our minds open up to it, you know, we have to get out in the trenches and experience a little bit of disappointment, a little bit of discouragement, and a little bit of success in order to, to be able to, to differentiate what's real and what isn't real. Okay, and uh, uh, so I congratulate everyone here for being at that at that point. Uh, and I'm going to move fast today. What I'm going to to try to give to you is really the the summation or accumulation of 22 years of trial and error, of failure, okay, and some tremendous successes. I think that uh, for myself. I've experienced almost everything that can be experienced in this type of business. Anything that you've gone through, anything that you're going through right now, believe me, I've been through it too. Uh, the no-shows, the people who say they're going to do it and disappear, uh, having 25 people in your group at a meeting and come to the next meeting and, you know, where are they? <laughs> where did they go? I mean, all of those things. And uh, uh, by being a creative problem solver, I think through trial and error, you, you learn what works and you learn what doesn't. Uh, some people fade away, you know, off into the horizon, okay? Others, and this is true in sports, it's true in, in uh, any field, of di any discipline, okay? Any field of endeavor, those people that rise to the top are the ones that learn from the problems, learn from the mistakes, learn from the experiences, and cash in on them, okay? And so, what I'm doing today is concentrating 22 years of those mistakes, experiences, successes, failures into a system, into a plan to eliminate some of those pitfalls for you. This system that I'm going to show you, that I believe, is the most powerful way to build an organization and make it last. Now, <clears throat> you can have a flash in the pan success, okay, where you get a lot of people in, make a little bit of money, but it doesn't last. Okay, you'll hear stories about people making a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a month in this this business. But I'd always ask a question: How consistent is it? This program was designed to be a long-term, consistent program. Okay, it isn't a money game. It isn't a flash in the pan. It's a real, legitimate, powerful, long-term business. And when you build it, you need to build it with a long-term vision. Uh, and <clears throat> If you understand one thing about this, contrasting it to other programs, other programs you lose everything you built at the end of every commission cycle, okay? If we concentrate on the right things and inbreed duplication, we'll have a compounding effect in this program. So what we did last month and the month before and the month before began to compound towards the ultimate goal of having an absolutely solid foundation 
that's duplicating what it takes to generate what? Money. So really we're here to talk about money. First thing I like to do is just get everyone to clear their mind a little bit. By the way, you know, I don't believe in motivation. I've always believed in irritation. I believe anyone who's ever done anything great isn't because they're motivated, okay? It's because they got burned up, a little irritated, a little fed up, a little mad, and something within them said, by golly, get out of my way. I'm going to make it go. So sometimes I have the tendency to be a little overbearing, a little irritating. Don't let that offend you, okay? You can take what you want. You can leave what you, you want. Point is, I'm telling you what's worked for me. And uh, it's your choice to accept it or reject it and go through your own experiences, okay? But uh, at least you'll have a track to run on. Uh, and I think there's, gonna, there's a lot of technical information that's going to be given out today, a lot of systematic material. I don't like seminars that give a lot of generalities, then you leave and you scratch your head. I like to, to present a plan to run on. What do I actually do? I like implementation. I like to go out and get it done today. I like to start by <clears throat> doing things. I know the biggest question in my mind as I was growing up in this business was what the heck do I do? I'd do anything. I'd go anywhere. I wanted it so badly that I would do whatever it took. Just tell me what to do. And I could have had a, it took years for me to find someone to tell me what to do that would actually share with me the real secrets to their success rather than a lot of vagaries and you know uh, you know pontifications from the, the platform. So this is going to be real nuts and bolts. How do you actually make it you know make it work? But to begin with, I'd just like to go through a little exercise here. Some of you may have seen this before, but I think it's real applicable. What do you see there? <coughs> we'll find someone who read the book, probably. Right? <laughs> Remember, originality is concealing your source. Okay? A big white spot with a little black in the middle. There you go. There's nothing is original, by the way. Now, at the end of the seminar, I don't want anyone to come up to me and say, man, that information was really good. I really liked it. Okay. All I want you to do is steal anything that works for you, that you like, make it your own so that your people think you're smart. See, the, point, the purpose of a leadership meeting is to make you the Dennis Franks. You understand what I mean? To make you the JR. So when you go back out, you don't have to credit this to me, you don't have to credit anything to Dennis. We want everyone to think you're the brilliant one, so they start listening to you. And isn't that what you really want? If people would only listen to you, okay? you could get them to succeed. Isn't that true? Okay. So you have to come from the, the position or the perspective that you're the expert. And all this business is, is teaching. And guess how you learn the business? Not by learning, but by teaching. It's principle number one. Okay. But uh, the problem most people have in the business is, uh, is that they concentrate on details that make them lose the focus of where they're going. We have so many problems, so many new experiences, so many little things that we'd like to see, but we have the tendency to concentrate on the dot. And we don't see all the space around the dot, which I call the big picture. So here a person gets into business and they get hung up on little things which seem very important to them, and they probably are very important. Okay? My suggestion is that you don't worry about them, that somebody else is worrying about them. Okay, but look at this. You know, we could put up here, you know, your, your dream home. <clears throat> uh, we could put up here any income level. We could put up here an organization of 5,000 people with 500 people earning uh, $2,100 a week. You know, we could put up here the car that you want. <clears throat> we could put up all the, the wonderful things that a business like this can bring. But so often people never achieve any of this because their focus isn't on the big picture or where we're going, but it's on the irritating details okay, <laughs> that basically prevent success. Why? Because we become consumed by them and we're not focusing on where we have to go or what we're trying to develop. And we get so consumed by them that nothing else happens. And everyone understands it's a big trap in the business. It's a trap for me. I fight it every day. Okay? Because we seem to gravitate towards what? <clears throat> Problems, details. You have to learn how to offload those things. Because I've learned that everything takes care of itself when we're succeeding. Everyone say that. Everything takes care of itself when it's succeeding. When you're making money, those problems go away. They can be solved. They can be treated. When you're succeeding and you're duplicating other leadership, 
rather than stymieing yourself and getting stuck in the mud, getting in a rut. <coughs> All the problems get solved because you have creative problem solving. You have team leadership. You have positive input. You have uh, an attitude, a, a, a psychology of where nothing can stop us. We'll, you look at every problem only as a situation, okay, and we come up with the, the, the solution. But when you have a group of people that are all stymied because they're concentrating on the dot, nothing happens. What happens after about 10 meetings and nothing happening? Discouraged. Boy, it's just, you kill it. Oh, you kill it. <laughs> so, we forget about the dot. I don't know what, everybody here has a hang up right now or you'd be making 300 grand per year, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. We all got hang-ups. I got hang-ups. Okay? <laughs> I just wish that, that I could get all of the, the details out of the way. My whole goal is just get all the details out of the way for the field so I can go back to recruiting. So I can get, that's all I would love to do. Okay? But we got to get that out and we got to focus on this because it creates a mass psychology. It creates a consciousness. Okay, And you don't get the right attitude and the right focus after you become successful. You get it first, and then you become successful. That's what most people don't understand. It starts up here. People say, what's the secret to success in the business? And my answer is real simple. It's being successful. So you come from success. The person says, how do you make it to the top? How do you get big? You're already there before you make it. See, most people think that it happens, and then you become it. You have to start right now pretending that you're making $327,000 a year at this, that you got three income centers qualified, that you know what you're doing, okay, and you're not going to put up with any bull crap. I don't know how else to say it. Anyone who makes it, the success that Dennis has had in the past, success he's had in the business up to this date, is simply, he's no different than you. He knew no more about the business than you. Think about it. He didn't have the answers. You all know that he didn't have the answers because I know that you're always on the phone with him, asking him questions, driving him nuts. He's pulling his hair out, calling me up. What's the answer to this? What's it? He knew nothing. But what did the success come from? Coming from success. I am successful. How do you know this will work? Because I'm going to make it work. It doesn't matter if you get in. It doesn't matter what the company does. Because if I'm growing, the company's going to be successful and they're going to listen to me. I'm just trying to project to you a mindset that that is a golden thread that runs through everyone who's successful in this business. Okay, and with that in mind, I think that it's real. And here's what. So here's what we're going to talk about today: money. Right? We're here to learn about how to make this business turn money. Okay. Now, uh, I believe it begins with a, a an evaluation. And this is a very, very critical in your critical thinking path and dealing with people and dealing with yourself. We have to, to solicit from people commitment, don't we? We have to develop yes. commitment. I don't think that that's possible unless you have clearly set in your mind how powerful this opportunity is in contrast to what else they could do to make a comparable amount of money. We've all come together because we're the ones that want to make the big money. Everyone in here, would you agree, everyone in here wants to make three hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year or better? Sure. Okay. One income center, seven income centers, right? Now, let's just for a moment think about someone who set out in life to make that type of money, what they're going to have to do. And let's compare it to what we have to do here, because for some reason people get sold on this plan and for, and all of a sudden they think that they oh. don't have to do any of those oh. things. Back right here. Okay. So we can go through the phone book, folks, and pick a a business. It could be a a car dealership. It could be something like we have here at the Eagles Nest. You know, a golf course. It could be a retail business. It could be a manufacturing business. Let's talk about you know a a million dollar plus business. Okay, that's generating big income. Well, let's just think about it. You want to go out and be successful and make an extra hundred thousand to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars per year. What are we going to have to do? Okay. Well, first, you know, let's talk about the investment. If you were going to buy a business like that, does anyone know what the general rule of thumb is? Five times the net. Isn't that it? That it? Five times the net. So if it's just a hundred thousand, if that business has been consistently generating a hundred thousand dollars in net income 
that'd be five hundred thousand dollars. Oh, sure, you might be able to get it down, uh, mortgage your life away, and buy it for a hundred thousand dollars now. Isn't that true? Okay. Uh, so right away, just to, to to equate to this type of income and the type of business that we have, someone's going to put down on the table a hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you think it's possible to do it otherwise, tell me how. Why doesn't everyone own a business here that can generate one hundred fifty to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars net income? It's real simple. They got to mortgage their life away. They got to lay down a hundred grand on the table. Okay, and we're talking about a few commitments here. I see. I think we got to put this whole thing in perspective in order for people to to do what's necessary to, to make the, the money. Okay. The, the, the second thing, uh, inventory. Oh, this is a great one. Okay, come on, uh, Mr. Store Owner. Hardware store, fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of inventory. A car dealership, the floor plan alone, just financing the inventory will put them under. Why do you think that they cut everything down to bare minimum at the end of the month? Why do you think they're all going out of business? Okay, <laughs> the inventory is ungodly. So what are we talking about here? <laughs> Three hundred. I mean, two hundred to, to, to fourteen hundred dollars worth of inventory. See, I tell people whatever it takes to supply your group, get because it's certainly less than anything else. We're going to make a hundred thousand to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. And why do we quab, squibble and, and and get upset over a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars when we're we're supposed to be thinking in terms of making a hundred fifty to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year? It makes no sense. To me, it didn't matter. Whatever I needed to make it, I was going to get. Does, it, does that make sense? Sure. Right. No? Yeah. Uh, what else? A building. Oh, this is a great one. Okay. And what, what's a, a, a building end up doing? Well, you got utilities. Okay. Uh, you got upkeep. I mean, every time something goes wrong with the building, whose pocket does it come out of? I mean, it just drives you nuts. I mean, I know some of you have been in this situation. It's just one, th every day it's something, isn't it? Headaches. Uh, what else? Paperwork. I mean, what about the paperwork in another business? Now, I look at this. What's my paperwork? At the end of the month, I get, or end of the week, I get a little statement with my check. and go to the bank and cash a check and put the statement in the, the file cabinet. I mean, that's terrible, isn't it? And I keep track of all my receipts. It's just unbelievable. Why? All the paperwork's all loaded here. Uh, I mean, don't under, underestimate this. This is a major hassle on every other business that I can think of. How much paperwork do you think there is in just running a place like this? You know, it, it, it's just ungodly. Employees. This is a great one. People that come in late. People that don't come in at all. <laughs> people that come in half lit. You know. People that quit when you need them. Uh, and then there's all the wonderful things about it. FICA taxes. I mean, isn't it wonderful? Someone gets laid off, or they get, or they leave, and you still got to pay the government so they can have their their unemployment. Well, that just drives you nuts. Wonderful. I mean, just great million dollar business. It's so prestigious, right? Uh, what else? Uh, regulations and licenses. I mean, the regulate regulators will just drive you nuts. There's so many ordinances and county laws and state laws and federal laws that you've got to be in compliance with that you can't even keep up with them. Half the time they conflict. You don't know what to do. Isn't that true, Scott? It's just unbelievable. All the, you always have you know, this black cloud following you around. You don't know what's going to come out of it because anything you do, you're doing something wrong. And you're who's liable? Who's on the line? Who, who's the one that's going to have to answer you? You. Okay. People always ask, can I do this? Can I do that? You say yes, and it's wrong. Who do they burn? You. But this is your million dollar business, you see. Uh, how about this? You need accountants? Boy, they're wonderful. Lawyers? I mean, who's going to handle all this? Okay. After a while, you give up. So you get an accountant, you get lawyers. Okay. You need, this is a great one, office equipment and furniture. Okay. And then it breaks down, doesn't it? Okay, you know, you have a power surge, your $2,400 fax machine goes out. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, okay, uh, what about this? Security and slippage. End of every month, stuff's missing. 
right? People come in, people leave, we're stuck, <laughs> okay? So you put in security systems, and it just goes on and on and on. And what about this? Come on, Mr. Car Dealer. Come on, Mr. Restaurateur. Let's go, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's go play golf this morning. Well, I can't do it. I got to be in at the shop. See, one of the most fascinating things about this business is that you're not tied and you're not controlled by the hours of the business. Every other business, the hours of the business control you and control your life. Okay? Think about it for a minute. They become married to the business. What about vacations? Come on, Mr. Car Dealer, let's, or Mr. Mr. Doctor. Let's, let's take a week off and go to California. I can't do that. I got patience. I mean, the, the, the dealership will fall apart. Okay? Because they can't. They don't have that, that luxury. It's just impossible in, the, in those businesses. And what about this? Retire or slow down. What happens in, the, in, in a business like this? What happens in a restaurant? What I, I mean, can you imagine someone has a successful restaurant? They are the personality there. They leave it. What happens? Customers don't want to come back. Okay. What about a car dealership? Can the guy really stop? Okay. Pretty difficult, isn't it? A manufacturing plant. He's got to sell it, doesn't he? He's got to sell it. And he gets one lump sum, and then his income drops off to nothing. I think these things are real important things to talk about because I have a business, it's a multi-million dollar business, okay? Dennis, you have a business, it's a multi-million dollar business. You add it up, it's doing millions of dollars worth of volume, and income potential is greater, but you know what? I got 10 cents worth of headaches versus a million dollars worth of headaches here. I don't see how you can sleep at night in this situation. I know that I couldn't, okay? 10 cents worth of headaches. You know where the business is? In my head. I can pick up and go wherever I want, do whatever I want, because I have a business in my, he in, in my head. A million dollar business with 10 cents worth of headaches with an ongoing income if I build it right. Now to me, this says something. And when someone tells me that they don't have time, you know, or they can't talk to someone, or they can't come to the seminar, or they can't get the slideshow, or they don't have the money. I don't understand. I don't listen to it. I don't hear it. They don't qualify. Okay? I mean, you, everybody here has to make a decision. Is this what they want? And if so, do they want these problems, or do they want these problems? Now, what's the downside of this? Okay? The downside is that you have to create it out of nothing and you have to, to be very strong in your approach to the business because it's what? Intangible. You are the business. So if you are the business, you have to be very strong, you have to know what to do, and you can't put up with a lot of bullcrap. I don't know what other vernacular to use. Okay? There's a way to do this that works and there's a way that doesn't work. If you keep doing it the way that it doesn't work, Okay? None of this is ever going to happen. Okay? If this guy doesn't do what works, he's in deep trouble. <laughs> he's in bankruptcy court, isn't he? Okay? Maybe that's the reason people don't commit enough here. There is no ongoing liability if it doesn't work. Okay? If you had a monkey on your back, if you had a $500,000 net on your back, okay, you want to be watching TV at night, you'd be talking to everybody. <laughs> Okay? And you'd make this thing work. And the point is, it would work a heck of a lot better than this deal. Everybody getting it? Okay? Now, moving on. And somebody, you know, I know that the mind can only endure what the rear end, uh, the, the mind can only endure what the rear end can endure. When I, when we've gone too long, somebody just let me know. Because I'm just going to go fast. Okay. Uh, we compare that to, to our business. Of course, you know, we got a couple scenarios. A hundred thousand, a hundred nine thousand dollars. Okay. Three hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars and seven hundred sixty-four thousand dollars. Okay. Three situations. Choose. Take your target. You know why I like this? Different people have different mental le level mental level capacities that when they enter the business. Okay. Choose what your target is. But let's understand this thing about time. You know, somebody gets a job, okay, if this is uh, time and this is money, what happens? They, they have a linear 
income. I mean, they put an hour in, they get an hour's pay, a week in, a week pay. And as time goes on, that may go up a little with little raises, right? And as we extend the timeline out for 45 years, when they retire, what happens? It drops down to there. So they spend, you know, 30 to 45 years of their life, okay, putting an, a week in for a week's pay, they get a few little raises, and then there, there's nothing left. <laughs> Isn't that what happens when people go through life? Okay, the second thing a person can do is get into sales, right? A little bit better situation, but less security for the security-minded. Benjamin Franklin said, if you seek security, you have no independence. Okay? <laughs> but at any rate, you can get it. You can you have a, a gentle curve going up. The better they get, and the more they sell, the more they make. But what happens the moment they stop? What happens if they can't go to work? Crash. Okay? Uh, the third scenario is things that have residuals and royalties. I would never do anything in my life that I didn't build up a residual royalty income. It makes absolutely no sense to me at, at this point in my life. Okay? I believe that the time we put into something today should be compounding itself and we should get a return on it next year, the year after. And individuals, this is a secret to wealth, people who become wealthy, everybody that becomes wealthy has figured that out. The difference between the masses who plane out in the sea of mediocrity and sit around in the doldrums of life, letting life pass them by, are people that are working one of these two. Even good salesmen can make, can make a lot of money. Have you ever seen a really great salesman? He's rich one day and poor the next. How many people have seen that? Okay. We need <laughs> something to do all that effort. All that effort continues to pay off. Okay, so here, the residual and royalty re routine, an example that would be uh, insurance with, with renewals, okay? And uh, or someone who develops something and get a royalty, or to some extent, people that are in business, okay? Um, and what happens here is we have a gradual increase similar to sales in our income. Then it kind of planes off, but when we stop, it drops down to a level. For instance, if a sales a insurance salesman is selling a couple million dollars per year, has a nice income, okay? And then it starts to plane off because he's putting less time in. If he, after a while, after five to ten years of doing that, he has enough residuals or renewals to still have an income, right? So he's still earning something from what he did back here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, you talk to anybody who's made it in the insurance business. There was a starvation period in that. It didn't compound at first. It took a long time. Now, let's take a look at this business. Okay. This business, to me, is the ultimate time, time versus money scenario because it compounds. Okay. In the beginning, the first three months to six months of the business are the hardest part. Okay, because we've got to put a lot out. It's like moving a boulder. Okay, you've got to move that boulder for it to start to snowball. <laughs> but everything that we're doing is accumulating and compounding towards the future. Does everyone understand that? Every other business, if you don't make it, all you have is the people you brought in. You've accumulated no credit for commissions or anything like that. Whereas this business you have. Now, what happens is it, it keeps compounding like this. As we open new income centers, it just keeps going up. Now, what happens when we stop? It stays. It stays. Now, compare that to the other business, million dollar business scenario that we talked about. My point is that your time is so valuable in this business. This business is so powerful. This concept is so powerful that to, to make any commitment less of whatever it takes, okay, we have some incorrect thinking, okay, and I, 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 I just think you have to become obsessed with this concept. Wow, what do I got here? What else can you do today? What else can anyone else you talk to do today to end up in this situation, make this type of money, have this type of security, this type of freedom, this type of time? Okay, without investing a million dollars. Now I grant you, someone has a million or two million dollars in the bank, they can accomplish it without what we're doing. But probably the guy is smart enough, having been around, that he'd want to do it anyway. 
Because it makes too much sense. Does that make any sense to you? Yes. So, so I don't apologize for the business. Now, I don't have any problems. I can't help it that some people are stupid. I realize that 90% of people are never going to make any money in their life. But that doesn't mean that it needs to be you, you or me. Now, let's get to how we apply this. You understand why what, what I went through is so important? Everything else that I'm going to tell you today really isn't important unless you've got that down. Because it takes commitment, and it takes conviction, and it takes being willing to nail people between the eyes. Now, don't make excuses to me. Go out and fail. I don't care. Instead of being mealy-mouthed and begging them and trying to apologize for what you're telling them to do. Does a, a, a coach of a great football team ask the players what to do, or does he tell them what to do? This is the game plan. And that's why you got to be. Okay, so. They are real quick while it's fresh in my mind. My major problem is not getting the two hundred dollars and and get to the, and getting the product to the person. It's to have them commit to me because I'm committed, and I mean I'll go and I can I could probably get ten two hundred dollar checks today, but to get them to do what I have to do, it, it's just they don't do it. <laughs> no, that's what we're going to talk about right now. You're right on course because the key to this whole thing is what you're talking about. The whole key to the business is duplication. Everything that we do in this business, and the only reason we do it, is for duplication. Anything that will not duplicate is wasted time in the business. Anybody who will not duplicate is a wasted person in this business. They don't qualify, okay? <laughs> Why am I taping this today? i just give you an example. Everything I think is duplication. I'm taping it because if this turns out all right, I want to use it on other people to duplicate what we did here so that they can take it and give the other people to duplicate it again. Okay? Uh, now, once we get duplication going, we get the compound. I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay? We get compounding interest. Why would people put money in the bank at, at half the interest rate for simple interest when they could put it in the bank for double the interest with compounding interest? It makes no sense, right? But I've probably heard this story when Vince Lombardi took the uh, the Packers from a bunch of renegades to a dynasty. He was asked by a reporter, "What do you contribute or attribute your success to?" He took a bunch of losers and turned them into to world champions year after year after year. He said, "Well, it's obviously not our playbook. Everybody knows what we're going to do. We run a sweep, we run a trap, and we go up the middle." He says the difference is that we block and tackle better than other teams. What was he talking about? Fundamentals. <laughs> Rubenstein was in Carnegie Hall. At the end of the concert, a young boy came up to him and says, Oh, you're, you know, the master. If only I could be like you. He says, You could if you played the scales up and down in every combination for as many years as I have. What was he talking about? Fundamentals. We have the tendency to get these highfalutin theories and philosophies, okay, concentrate on all the wrong things. Okay, uh, and miss the, the fundamentals. And I know this, the difference between success and failure is real simple, very, very simple. The individual who succeeds simply did what the individual who failed didn't do. Okay? I mean, you can go to a hundred seminars, and uh, you, know, you get all these wonderful theories and whatnot. I reduce it down to a real simple statement. The individual who succeeds did what the individual who failed didn't do, regardless of the reasons, regardless of the rationalizations, regardless of the excuses. There's legitimate reasons and excuses for everyone here to fail. We can use them or we can throw them away, right? But the bottom line is, in this business, if you're going to get duplication, if you're going to get compounding interest on all your time, you have to duplicate the fundamentals of the business. And if you don't duplicate the fundamentals of the business and require it of anyone who comes in, all you're doing is wasting your time. Get out of your mind the hope that someone's going to take off and make it happen without doing what it takes. Okay? Remember, this is a million dollar business. Just because they only have to put in two hundred to six hundred dollars to get it going doesn't mean that it's still not a million dollar business and requires the same type of commitments, the same type of dedication to professionalism. Does that make sense? Okay. And uh, the whole business then. Now keep in mind fundamentals. Because we have, we have to, to make sure that the fundamentals are happening at every level of the business. And I'm going to define them for you if this thing is going to work. Okay, now, the business works on a formula. And everything that I do 
in this business and building it is based on this formula. Everyone should write it down. As you do your critical thinking about where you're going to work, who you're going to work with, what you're going to do, it always comes back to this formula. You've got to put time in, don't you? Okay? And the time is supposed to produce what? Growth. We get very frustrated when we put time in and we get no growth. Isn't that true? Okay? That is supposed to equal what? Volume. We get very frustrated when we have growth but we don't get volume out of it. And that's supposed to equal money, which translates into our dreams. Now, what we do, what we work at in the business is to, is to make these functions equal. They're not automatically equal. We work to make them equal. Does everyone understand that? Every hour you put in, you could have the same amount of growth. Okay? You'd be very happy. Okay, now the key to it, I'm going to put an exponent up here above time. Q. Quality time. The key to it isn't putting time in. You can put five years into this and make nothing. Okay? The key to it is quality time. You have to value your time. You have to perceive the business as I just put it up here and treat it that way. And you have to only put in quality time. I'm going to define what quality time is for you. Quality time is only dealing with people who will do what I call the basic five. People that are what I call go now people. And if you're not putting your time in with those people, or if you don't have any, just putting time in with who you got isn't going to get you anywhere. You're putting time in, but it isn't quality, therefore you'll get no growth. Everyone understand this? Okay. And I'm going to take it a step further in a minute, but when we're putting in quality time, growth gets a little exponent on it, making it equal to this, called duplication. Okay. And what we're duplicating is the basic five. I'm going to go over these in some depth. Okay. One is the development of the right attitude and knowledge. And I'm going to go into to depth about how we, we do that. Hey, that may be so fundamental to you, you may kind of say, oh, I heard this in all my real estate courses, all my sales courses, everything I went, back to attitude. Let's be positive, children. Okay? It's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about exuding confidence. I'm talking about being ferocious. I'm talking about <laughs> being a, a very strong business person that nobody can influence. Okay? I mean, if you could talk and feel and, and stand in front of somebody like I could, would you be successful? Right? Or like Dennis, there's no difference. It's simply a matter of mental conditioning, understanding where we are, and laying down the groundwork. Okay, but we have to develop that. Okay, and I, I'm getting off course here. I want to overview this first. Second uh, is goals. There's absolutely no use someone being in this business without a detailed goal plan. We're going to do one today, real quickly. I'm going to show you how to do it today, so that you can have it down on paper and teach it to your uh, to your people. I mean, if how are you going to make $327,000 a year? you got a, uh, a supervisory entry level. Well, I went around the room here. Most people wouldn't have the answer. Now, it should be like this. Well, I want it in six months. So in six months, I have to sponsor 16 people because I'm not going to depend on anyone. I need four legs. Four legs going. And I'm not going to depend on those. So I'm going to back each one of them up with three good people. That means I have to do X number of people per month. I have to show the plan two times a week and I have to sponsor one person every other week. Now that, and that means I need to develop one possibility per day. Because if I have one possibility per day, I have so many, and out of them, I'm gonna get one per, two people to see the plan per week. That is a goal. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Okay? And then you can measure each day what, where you are. And until, until someone does that, it's all up in the air, folks. Okay? But we need goals. Now, so why would you want to work with someone? Try to get this about duplication and quality time. Why would you want to work for someone who doesn't have the right attitude and isn't gaining the knowledge or doesn't have the goals? This is your million dollar business. Will you hire someone that's not going to get the right education, that's not going to do the right things, who isn't going to listen to you? Well, you're hiring people in this because you're spending your money on them by putting your time into them. Okay? And now, it'd be a different thing if this thing was a floozy operation, wasn't going to last, there wasn't big money in it. But we're talking about a...
tapes or sitting at home cooking, listening to tapes, all of a sudden this consciousness, this we're, we're feeding the mind, we're feeding the mind, okay, we're displacing the negative, we're blowing it out, we're blowing it out, we're blowing out the discouragement, okay, pretty soon people become strong, more positively conditioned, they become more strong in their mental attitude, and what else do they do, they start picking up knowledge, and knowledge in this business gives confidence, the more you know, the more you know, the more conviction you have, the more you can stand on your own two feet and blow someone away when they come out with some dumb statement. Isn't that true? Okay. Uh, what else do we do? Uh, and we teach this. Association with leaders. Successful athletes associate with successful athletes. Successful musicians associate with successful musicians. Successful uh, doctors associate with successful doctors. Larry Thurston. Not here. Uh, so, why do they do this? Because there's a way of thinking. There's a mindset. Why are we here today? So that we all, all know that we're not really crazy, right? we got to come back together, uh, you know, to make sure that we're all sane. Because everybody else is telling us we're crazy, right? Okay? But association with positive people that are doing the business, that are committed to it, generates new ideas, solutions, reinforcement, and it, it conditions the mind positively. It creates a mastermind. It creates a, a greater force than us. We draw on each other. And I'm telling you, this is no minor thing. You guys need to get together every two weeks. This is a leadership group. You might want to call yourself something. something. You may want to call it the executive club or something. You may want to have badges at the meeting so it becomes a prestigious thing. And not everybody can get in it. Here's the criteria. Here's the requirements. And every week you get together to discuss solutions, not problems. There's no problems. There's only conditions or situations. We come up with solutions. We talk about things that we found to build the business. I don't want to sit at a meeting and hear about all the problems. I already know the problems. I want to talk about what's going to work. How can, I'm going to make more money. You guys come together. You know what else you do? You motivate each other. Your biggest responsibility right now in the business, I'll tell you what it is, okay, is to motivate your upline. If you motivate your upline, your upline will tear your group up. Will rip it up for you. I never called my, I found out, the first time I was in this business, I, I, I showed the plan to 20 people and one person got in, and then they quit. I was so discouraged, I called up my upline. This was 20 years ago. Went on and on and on and on, okay? And I remember what he said, he said, Jim, that's just fine, I really feel like talking to you. And he hung up. And then that floored me, you know, and I thought, so the next time I got on the phone, I said, man, I should have planted 20 people. I'm that much closer to getting somebody in. I just can feel it. I know it. He said, man, I'm going to book four meetings for you. <laughs> I mean, your major responsibility is to inspire Dennis and Nancy, or your upline, your group. And if you teach your group to do that, what are they going to do? We teach them, never come to the leader with a, a problem that you don't have a suggested solution for. Okay? Never bring negative downline, only bring it upline, but make sure you motivate your leader first, okay? because he may misinterpret it that you're negative. <laughs> Does that make sense to everybody? When we start doing that, man, you, it creates a generator. Uh, okay, I mean, look, businesses have problems, don't they? Large companies have problems. If everybody comes into the boardroom or the management meeting with the, their, their tail between their le legs without a positive attitude, everything starts to disintegrate. Isn't that true? It's no different here. Uh, okay, meeting seminars. Okay, and the biggest thing you do is you teach this stuff. If you teach it, it's going to motivate yourself. You know, when you teach, you're only teaching yourself. Everybody else simply happens to overhear it. And then things, we start to make it happen. Now, do you see that there's really a system for this? The point I want to make is attitude and knowledge is developed by implementing a system. By first you doing it, getting people to re-listen to tapes, getting them to attend the meetings and associate and to call the upline and the upline calling them. You start creating a communication flow of positive. And it starts to affect people. The second thing then is goals. Okay. Now, <coughs> real simple. Right. Can we have, uh, can we stop and have a break Got it. for uh, ten minutes? Time to go to the library. <laughs> number two in the basic spot. Okay. And understand this: that number two doesn't work unless number one is there. Okay. 
unless someone's cultivating the right attitude and get, getting the knowledge, there's no reason to set goals, and they won't set goals. Does that make sense? Okay. So <clears throat> number two, then, I sit down, everybody that I'm working with, and I get this on paper, and I want to see it, or I don't want to work with them, because they're not going to go anywhere. Just suppose you were going to go uh, uh, in, in the fitness program, okay? And you went to the gym or whatever. Uh, or, you know, you were in a certain athletic event. Would not the coach or the trainer sit you down, figure out what you want to accomplish, and break down a schedule of what you're going to work on? In a business, a major business, is there not a strategic plan of what their goals are, how they're going to get there, okay? Uh, milestones and quotas and, and, and measurement points week by week so they know where, where they are. I'm telling you, friends, in this business, nothing will happen, okay? It's, it, it's all up to luck. You've got a 50-50 chance of making it, okay, if you don't have a system like this. And because duplication is the key, the chance is even less. Because if you, if you don't have everybody in your group doing this, they're not go now, they're not going to be on course, and the business is so intangible. We don't go into an office. We don't go into, you know, a store or a, a plant. Okay? It's all in our head. It's all out there. The only reality of the business is the meetings. Okay? So what happens in between? Why don't people produce? Because they're not focused. There's no burning desire. And logic in our minds, when we have a logic pattern that supports the thing that we're trying to believe in, the belief becomes crystallized. It becomes real to us. Okay? Too many people, this whole thing is pie in the sky, it's blue sky, it's not real. And unless we make it real to their particular situation and show them how it's actually going to happen, they'll never totally get committed. Does it make sense? So why go on with people? <laughs> Mention, get the check. You got the check. That's first base. Okay? Second base is cultivating the right attitude and knowledge. Okay? And then getting them to set a goal. Once that's done. And here's what we got to do. We got to talk about what they want. Why are you going to do this? What is it that you want that you can't already get on your job? You can already get it on your job. There's no use doing this. You'll watch TV every night. Okay? If money wasn't an issue, if you could have 327 grand extra a year or 750,000 extra a year, how would it impact your life? What are we going to translate it into? Let's talk about it. I'll tell you, this probing is fabulous information for you. Okay? Because if you know that their burning desire is to have a yacht or to, ha or to pay off their mortgage or to send their kids to school or to quit their job, you've got the, the hot button that you can keep pressing. Okay? You know, Dennis wants you out to this meeting. Uh, I don't know. I said, well, you know, you can use that or you can get your yacht. <laughs> press the button. Press the button over and over and over again. Man, I can see it. You're getting closer to that yacht. Let's go out and look at them this weekend. Powerful. Okay, guy wants, you know, uh, Mercedes or whatever. Hey, let's go stop by the dealership on the way to a meeting. Well, I tell you, the powerful stuff that you're doing with these the, with, with individuals. They want homes? Hey, one Saturday, take them out and look at some homes. Okay? Fundamentals, friends. But when you get that planted in someone's mind, it becomes their business, not your business. Not you trying to talk them into doing it. So what do they want? we got to write it down. And then we got to uh, translate it into income centers in the business. Well, we know real easy. There's some levels. What, what is this? What does it cost? Okay. And uh, does it take 300? Does it take 1,200? Does it take 1,500? Does it take 2,100? Does it take 6,300? Does it take 14,700 per week? Does it take $27,000 per month? All we have to do is divide income centers into the money that they need. All of a sudden, they see three income centers qualify, four legs over this year, and I can get that new vacation home. All of a sudden, it's taking on meaning to them. Now, I guarantee you, if people are just in this to make money, I'm in it to make money. You, you, you get people up in front of the room. What are you in for? I'm in it to make money. That doesn't mean anything. Nothing's going to happen. Does this make sense? Okay, second thing is, when do they want it? Well, we determine when they want it by analyzing how much time they're willing to put in and the strength of, of, of their level of development. Okay? If a person is already a business person, or already has people skills and has a lot of contacts, okay, they can accomplish the same thing that someone that doesn't have it in half the, half the, the dedicated time. In other words, if a person's young and they're just starting out, uh, 
they might have to hold four meetings a week to accomplish the same goal in six months as someone who is very well established could do in one or two nights a week. Does that make sense? It's just a, a judgment call. But we have to determine when based on the goal and based on their time commitment and their, their development level of what it's going to take. And we set the goal. And I explained to people this is not cast in iron. This will change five times between now and the time you reach the goal. But we're going to keep fine-tuning it until we get it perfect, until we get it right. And when it gets right, they absolutely believe it. Okay? Talk to anybody who's been successful. They commit plans to writing. Okay? And why then in this business that has more potential than the other traditional businesses, we've already demonstrated that, do we not do that? Therefore, people fail because they don't do it. The difference between success and failure, individual who succeeds does what the individual who fails doesn't do. Why would you dare work with someone that didn't have this down? You're wasting your time. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to frustrate yourself. Okay? When they come to the leadership meetings at my house, okay, when I was building the business, entry fee was their goal statement. It was almost funny, you know. I got it right here. <laughs> I got it. You know, but it was kind of like a positive joke, you know. And it, it was it was the standard. Everybody had it. And everybody in their group had it. But see, what we were setting in motion carried in motion. Does it make sense? Like you guys all do it. Okay, even though I know you're above it, okay, you're going to start getting your group doing it, and the trickery of the whole thing is it works on you. <laughs> okay, uh, give or overcome. What are you willing to give or overcome? Okay, each one of us has weaknesses as preventing our success. Isn't that true? Let's, let's acknowledge it. Okay, each one of us is going to have to make a commitment. In other words, if this business can give you anything you want in life, what are you willing to give the business? If this is actually a multi-million dollar business that you just bought, and you had to invest that $500,000, okay, and you had to go handle all those problems that we were talking about, what would you commit to the business? How are you going to treat it? How do you perceive it? What's real and what isn't? You make it real. Okay, so, what are we willing to give? How many nights per week? Okay, that's up to you. It depends on your family commitments, what, what your other income, okay, but you have to make that determination. How much money are you willing to put into it? Are you willing to go to the seminars? Okay? Are you willing to, to, to get a kit? Are you willing to get some extra product? Are you willing to get the training materials? Okay? Hey, it's easy to say, no, I'm not willing. Well, then don't expect $327,000 per year. It ain't going to happen. Maybe you'll make $30,000. That's fine, too. But let's line up what we're willing to give with what we want. Does that make sense? Okay? It's a simple matter of putting the two on the scale. If this is important enough to you on the want side, what are you willing to give on the, on the giving side? And when you get people starting to balance this, you don't have to talk them into stuff anymore. Making sense? Okay? Uh, but this isn't going to happen automatically, friends. Okay? You get the check, first base. You sit down with them, attitude and knowledge. You sit down with them, crystallize the goal. All of a sudden, the business becomes a heck of a lot more interesting because it isn't Dennis Frank's business in front of the room. It's their business. It's their house. It's their child's education that they're working for. Okay? Now, what, are they willing to, what do they have to overcome? Sometimes it's procrastination. Let's identify it. Fear and hesitation of talking to people. Negative thinking. Negative relatives hampering them. Stay away from them if they're going to beat you up. Okay? Uh, whatever it is. Okay? Uh, TV. Couch potatoism. Okay? Put the TV in the attic. If it's going to stop you from making the $327,000 until you hit your first check. Your reward is you can take it back out and watch one night a week. We have to do things to discipline ourselves. Okay? A detailed plan. Big, big thing. Now that we know what we want, when we want it, and what we're going to give or overcome, we've got to make sure we get there. A month will pass by before anything happens unless we've broken it down to the smallest common denominator. What I have to do each month to reach the yearly goal, each week to reach the monthly goal, I just simply divide four in a month, right? To determine what i got to do each week. Then what I have to do each day? There's seven days a week. I can only take a week one day at a time. I don't take it seven days at a time. If I know what i got to do each day, I will achieve the weekly goal, thereby achieving the monthly goal, thereby achieving the, the yearly goal. And you can go around and manage your group like this. Okay? And I, I do it all the time. I call them up and say, John, did, 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 you, did you add two names to your list today and call one person? Remember, that's your boat. <coughs> what you do today. Well, I haven't done it yet. This I say, hey man, 
How important is it? Get on the phone before you go to bed. Do it. You'll feel good about yourself. <coughs> and, and it starts to happen. They're not doing it for me now because I want to make money. They're doing it for them, and it's duplicated. Make sense? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and you know, some of you may have never heard of any of this stuff before applied to multi-level business. We're not really multi-level. Okay. A lot of programs are driven on what I call uh, flash floods. Okay. There's some crazy product that creates hysteria, but I guarantee you they're gone next year. I can trace the history of this industry. This is one of the few programs that's profitable enough to sustain you, that accumulates so you don't have to get discouraged if you don't make it this month. Okay? But it's built for the long-term, ongoing, residual income, month after month after month. I think we have a business plan set up from the company side. This company can't fail. We reduce liabilities, the, the, the vulnerability to certain... Uh, traps out there. We pay everything off weekly. We can't get out on the limb. We don't borrow. So you got to set in your mind that, that this whole business is based on what you develop. Okay, it can't fail. This isn't one of these programs that are, that have so many pitfalls or vulnerabilities or liabilities that there's a high probability the company won't be around in two years. We are building for the long term. Okay, and uh, uh, so these things being developed, they're programmed, and the group are critical. Because what happens when you have an army a year from now, 500 people that have all done this? You can't stop it. You can't take it away. I mean, I look at a company like Amway. I mean, average, average products. Okay? Average, average marketing plan. I don't see how anyone can do it. I mean, I did it 15 years ago. I was crazy. So hard. But look at them. Two billion dollars? You can't pull those people out of that business for anything. It's not anything compared to this. Why? One, of the w one thing that they did right, in spite of everything that's wrong with that program, okay, they have leadership that has taught this. It's like taking a, 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 a team of football players with absolutely no talent and a great coach that makes these guys so programmed and so drilled that they, they have a, a, a winning record. They don't win the championship, but they, you know, they come out on top. And it's the same thing here, okay? Uh, even with an inferior plan, and we have the best plan in the industry, but even with an inferior plan, people are going to experience success implementing these things. Make sense? Okay? Uh, and I realize that, that the most frustrating part of this is the beginning, getting it going. But we're, we're investing in the future. Detailed plan. Write the goal statement down. We now take what we want, when we want it, uh, what we're going to give or overcome, the detailed plan. We write it into a 50 or 100 word statement, incorporating one through four. We put it on a little piece of paper. We put it in our wallet. You put it on your bureau. Every morning when we get up, we read it. Every night when we go to bed, we read it. You think this is funny? Okay. Studies of the most successful people in the world prove that this is what they've done. Okay, unknowingly, not each other knowing that they've done it. Okay, and the studies have shown in one form or another, this is a golden thread that runs between people that make millions. Okay, so uh, just taking this a step further so you can teach it to your people. Okay, we need to get people to have a series of goals. Now, here's a person, lots of they set this giant goal. I'm going to make $327,000 a year and buy a million dollar home. Great. A year goes by and they're still sitting back here. <laughs> okay? We need a series of rewards or goals. There's all saying that the highest is the nearest, the thing that really drives you is the thing that will get you there. And it may be out here, but we need little milestones along the way so that we can go up the stairs. They may not be the real goal. They may be rewards. Okay? But if we can set a goal at 300 to reward ourselves, we can set a goal at 1,200, at uh, 2,100, at 4,200, at 6,300, okay, at 14,700, okay, and right on up the scale, okay, it becomes walking up the stairs rather than trying to jump to the top, making progress. So I sit down with people and say, look, let's list five things that you want in the order of cost. Now this is teaching. See, all we do in this business is teach. You don't have to say that, that you got this from me. It's in the career manual. But you sit them down like you are a professional. You're a teacher. You're a business consultant. Okay? On my IRS form, it says I'm a marketing consultant. Okay? I mean, that's what most people who are successful in this business are. <laughs> so why not consult them? 
on how to be successful in this business. Okay, we write down the things that they want. What is the, uh, the entry cost, the down payment or whatever? This is the, world, the, the day of finance, right? Okay, what's the entry cost? Okay, what's the monthly carrying cost? Okay, what's the crude or accumulative cost of, of one and two together, of two and three together, in order to maintain that lifestyle? Does this make any sense to you? Now, how many income centers does that require you to be qualifying per month? All of a sudden, their goals are translated into the business. Everyone see this? Does it make sense? Now that we know the goals, okay, I can take it and translate it into, uh, into actually what has to be done on a detailed plan. And this is when the light bulbs go off. Okay? For instance, uh, we could go through this with each, with each one of you, and I just, if there's anything that I beg you to do, sit down with your sponsor, or sit down with Dennis and Nancy, or sit down with your, your spouse, and do this. Have it on paper. You don't have to show it to anyone down line, okay? The only one you would share it with is your upline, or, or you don't even have to do that. But have it, well, it written. And start doing it with your people. Uh, let me show you a scenario. This will show you how this works. Six months and one year. The person has selected the time, the when, on, on the following goal, one for six months and one for, for a year. And what it is, is to get to $27,000 per month in earnings. How many people would feel successful if that happened within six months? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you a irrefutable, irrevocable, okay, absolute way of achieving that that you have total control over. The problem with this business is we so often represent the people, get two people in and it'll happen. Okay. Well, the, the right thing is it could happen if you got two people in, but you're leaving it up to chance and to other people's timing. Ambitious, and you're the the more aggressive type. Okay, you want everybody who's really aggressive and and, and successful is control oriented. I can go around this room and I can just tell because I know some of the personalities in it. They want control over everything. <laughs> Don't give me this BS. I want to control it. Well, I'm going to give you control over it. Okay, where you don't have to depend on it. And part of the control mechanism, friend, is. Okay? Here's my requirements for me to work with you. You can get in the company, but you're going to get in under somebody else because I'm not working with you unless you're doing this. Okay, That's my control. You know, I got something coming up this weekend. Great, don't expect me at any of your meetings this month. Go to the hullabaloo. You see, I said, I'm not trying to be mean to you, George, Okay, but I got people clamoring at my door to do this, and I got to hit my goal. Okay, I'll hold meetings for you next month. Is there anything wrong with that? Well, you know, you'll find people turning around. They're saying, they won't say that next time. Okay, and you don't say it with anger and hate. You say it with love and concern and honesty and a smile on your face. Dennis is great at that. He can scream anybody out and have them like it. Okay, <laughs> but uh, at any rate... <laughs> Okay, so let's suppose you don't want to count on on anyone else, and you're gonna you're gonna qualify a tri pack, okay? And we got six months to do it. That's what we said for ourselves. The person who thinks they're gonna do it in a month is crazy, okay? Twenty-seven a month within six months, but it's reachable, and it's so realistic you can't fail. You'll become a hopeless success if you follow the plan, okay? <laughs> Okay, now, I could get four legs, and it might happen, but what happens if, isn't this how you plan in business, okay? What happens if the four legs aren't the right ones? What happens if the four customers aren't the right ones? What happens if the four contracts don't succeed? Does the company that's in business allow themselves to, to, to be vulnerable to, to something going wrong? Not a successful company, therefore, why would you do it, okay? I am going to control my success here. I don't. If one of these guys doesn't do it, it isn't going to affect me. I'm going to, to develop a total of 16 leaders. Okay, four in each group. I will back them up. I'm going to find four people in each group. I'll put them down there myself if I have to. Right. You want to get someone excited? Here's a house. Where do you light the fire if you want to burn it down? In the attic? Or in the basement, okay? If I want to get you excited, the best thing I can do is get someone who's going to listen to me because you're not listening, 
and put them under you, get them growing, you're looking around, my goodness gracious. And what you know what you're going to end up doing? You're going to end up doing what that person's doing and what I'm doing rather than doing it your own way. Does that make sense? Uh, but you're saying, I don't have the people, Jr. I can't find the people. Well, we need to o- overcome that. That's no problem. First, we've got to figure out what we got to do, right? 16 liters, okay? That comes out to 2.76 per month. Now, that becomes a little more realistic. i got to find 2.76 people per month. Being that I can't find 7.76 of somebody, I'm going to get three per month, and that lets me overshoot in case something goes wrong. So I now know. In order to achieve this goal and not leave it up to anybody else, I need three new people that I bring in who will do the basic five. They're not going to give me any bunk, okay, uh, per month. And I'm going to show them how to make this type of money. Uh, okay, can you talk like this? You better believe you can talk like this. In fact, they like you more when you talk like this, okay? You know, down in the South, they talk behind your back. They'll <laughs> smile and agree with everything. Okay. Up north, the thing I love is, is you insult them first before they insult you, <laughs> and they respect you. <laughs> California will get in anything and be in something else tomorrow. So, actually, this is the hardest area in the country to build, but it's the best, because when people commit, they generally commit. Okay. At least you know what they're thinking. <laughs> yeah, and down south, you find out through the grapevine. <laughs> okay, at any rate, uh, so... That's three per month. Now, if that's what we got to sponsor, that means we have to, sh- I would say, you could tell me, to, to sponsor one person, how many, well, first of all, let's break this down further. One per week. If we're sponsoring one per week, we've overshot three per month, haven't we? Now, actually, we could miss a week, you see? Isn't that great? We could miss a week, because you may not be perfect. But if we were sponsoring one per week, okay, we would definitely hit this goal. <coughs> Now, is that too much to ask if you really want to make it? I mean, compare it to the other business, the, the, the million-dollar business we put up there. Is that harder than that? Is it harder to go into work eight hours a day? Okay, so this is something we have to do. We're focused on. One per, one per week. Now, in order to do that, I would say the average person has to show the plan to three to four. Most people get right out of the start gate one out of three or four. Would you agree with that? Okay. Now... In order to do that, you get better. You get to the point where it's almost one on one, because you screen them before they ever get the uh, the privilege of seeing the plan. You get so good at qualifying people and dangling it. That's important. It is important. We're going to go That's over that. For most well, uh, you know, well, what's it all about? Geez, you probably really want to be interested. You want to be willing to commit to what it what it takes. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, I yes, I would. How much money is it? Three hundred twenty-seven thousand. But I'll tell you, you really need to identify two good people that have management capabilities, good business minds that are promoters to help run this thing. You know, I know you're too busy. and Well, I know two good people. Well, you write down five or ten people, show it to me, and I'll decide whether this is worth the show to you. That's the way I operate. And instead of saying... George, I got something so great, you've got to see it. Come on over. Right away, he's backing up. You're like a big St. Bernard dog jumping on him, <laughs> lapping him. You know, he backs him. Jeez. I mean, how can it be so great if you need me? Because everybody doesn't think that they're that great, right? You see? So, uh, any rate, but don't worry about that. That'll come with time. You don't need to, to you just do what you can do right now. And I'll show you some techniques when we hit recruiting. But to show it at three or four per week, that means that we probably have to invite eight per week. Isn't that true? Because timing isn't right for everyone. Just invite eight per week. Okay? Uh, in order to show it to, to four per week, to sponsor one per week, and I would say that's 16 prospects that we got to get on our list. Now, I maintain that we don't concentrate on inviting people. We concentrate on developing possibilities. You know what we do on a daily basis? If you don't have any possibilities right now, you have no one to call. If you have no one to call, nothing else happens. The key is inventory. Okay? So I'm always developing possibilities. And I maintain that if you are doing two people, two to three possibilities on your list per day, that doesn't take any real effort, does it? Two to three possibilities on your list a day. Okay? <clears throat> so you're developing two prospects per day. Okay? And inviting one person per day to a meeting or to, to see the program. 
One per day. You don't go to bed unless you do one. It doesn't matter if they say no or yes. Okay? Then we are automatically going to show the plan to three per four per week, and automatically we're going to sponsor one per week and have three or four sponsored per month. At the end of six months, I have 16 liters. Does this make sense? Okay, down four, four legs. It's not up to anybody else. It doesn't matter if they get their two. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, let's take it over here. Okay, again, 16 liters. Here it takes 1.33 per month. So I'm going to say two per month. See, because we got more time to do it in. Does this make sense? If you can believe $327,000 at the end of a year or, or start earning that monthly, that means six per month i got to show the plan to. That means i got to invite 12 per month. That means I need about 24 prospects, okay? And I break this down that if i got one prospect per day, one prospect per day on my list, and I invited not one per day but four per week, that's one every two days about, right? So every two days, you've got to be inviting someone to a meeting. Now, isn't that realistic? Can't you mentally accept that and handle that? Could you discipline yourself to do that if it meant three hundred twenty-seven grand a year? I mean, to me, it just makes a heck of a lot of sense. Uh, so uh, based on that, we're going to show the plan to one or two people per week, and we're going to sponsor one per month. We only have to sponsor one per month in this scenario. One or two per month. Isn't that true? And presto, we're there. Okay? Now, if we write all this out, going back, what we want, when we want it, what we're willing to give up, okay, or overcome, put down our weaknesses. I'm going to overcome procrastination. Put it in the statement. The detailed plan of what i got to do each week, excuse me, each month, each week, each day, and write it down and read it twice a day. You know what it's going to do to you? Forget what it's going to do to you. What's going to happen when all your people are doing that? I mean, I can't even explain it. Why don't I work with someone that's not doing the basic five? Because it doesn't work. Okay? Now, the next thing is <coughs> retail. Now, we could do a whole seminar on this, and it's probably the most... Uh, the easiest but the most technical of all the areas because each area is specialized, okay? <clears throat> all I can say is, is we have to begin with an understanding. This company is a little bit different than other companies that focus on one product area because you've got to find people that, uh, that need that product or want that product, which reduces your chances sometimes of finding someone who wants a product that you can take an order for. There's two things that we do in this business. We have market-driven products. I'm telling you, these products were selected because people already want them. People are already buying them. If you simply tell the story or have them and use them, you're going to end up taking orders. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. There's two parts of this. There's taking orders and there's selling. Now what we do is we specialize in one product area to sell. And I'll explain that in a minute. But the, if we have a kit and we're using all the products, we're going to end up taking orders. Why? Because you're going to run into a mechanic that has greasy hands and needs protection. You're going to run into someone who's talking about getting their nails done. You're going to run into someone who's interested in jewelry. All you do is bring it up. So you won't believe what I found. I got something that you might be interested in. And you tell the story. We don't sell. We tell the story. If they're interested, what do we do? We take the order. <coughs> uh... Now, my point is that retailing all comes down to exposure, okay? <clears throat> if we concentrate on one product area and just take orders for the rest, we're going to start moving a, a, a lot of product. And <clears throat> we start, when you get someone in the business, I tell them the first thing you need to do is buy a kit so you can shop in the mall without walls and determine what you want to sell. You're going to find people that just want the other stuff because they're going to buy it anyway and you take their orders. Does it make sense? Okay. So, at the meetings, we want to get to the point where you all buy some kits, have them at the meetings, stacked up in a pyramid or something. Okay. Sell the kits right at the meetings. Okay. Is that a bad word, pyramid? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It used to be. We're not in Egypt. <laughs> okay. But being that we're not in multi-level, it's no consequence to us, right? Uh, but at any rate, 
get people to use the kit. Okay, select and specialize. Select an area, specialize in it. Then we target a market. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. Right now, there's a in the, in the kit. Okay. In your career manual, there's a section on retailing, and it gives you a lot of great ideas here. What we talk about is, one, making a list of people and uh, that, that will use different types of products, okay, and matching up products to people that you know. It simply creates a consciousness of what you might be able to introduce to them, and it happens serendipitously. It doesn't happen necessarily by design, but I find you have to create the consciousness and the possibilities before anything happens. Does that make sense to everyone? So if you do, if you, everyone was to do a little training with their group on this retailing section, and then we 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 talk about the steps. One is develop a customer list. Two is these are the different methods. Okay, depending on the product area that you select, you're going to match the merchandising method to the product area. Different product areas have different m merchandising methods which are effective. Okay? And we can match them up. You can match them up for your group. And there's a little section on each one of them. One is sample or trial size uh, test marketing. What would that work with? I'll give you this. Huh? Clear shield, body mate. Uh, this game, you can tell So <laughs> we match them up. And it explains how to do them then. How do you do trial size or test marketing? Well, it explains it right in here. So the person that wants to do, say, body mate, you talk, explain to them how you give a sample out, how you get someone to test it, their reaction, and how you get them to buy a case as a result of that. Real simple. Um, okay, the second one is one-on-one -on -one sales. We talk about how to set up the appointment, how to do it informally, and, and how to do it. Okay, what's great for that? Nail bonding. Uh, home previews, clinics, and presentations to special interest groups. Okay, how to do a home clinic how to do a presentation to a, a, an organization of legal secretaries or, you know, women in business or whatever. It talks about how to set up the, the, or the, the local realtors association, okay? uh, you know, maybe with the security device, the, the Terminator. Terminator. Great little thing to do, and it, it works very well. Uh, five, uh, fundraising. It talks about what types of products and how to do fundraising. Referral sales, how to get a, give a person an incentive for giving you somebody else. Uh, preferred customer program, how to get set up like the, the frequent flyer programs, okay? How to set one up for your preferred client base and how to cultivate it. It even gives you how to make the forms in here, okay? Uh, counter displays, booths, at flea markets, bazaars, fairs, yard sales, trade shows, special events. 11 direct mails and how to get a warm list, how to use it, how to design the, the, the mailing for, for the, the list. Now, each product area may have two or three merchandising methods that will work with it. So all we need to do is get the person to buy the kit, specialize in a product, use the product, then they get product knowledge and the benefits, the special features, price justification, so they can tell the story. Then all we have to do is match it with the merchandising technique. The merchandising technique creates exposure. If you have exposure to the product, so many people are going to want the product. If they want it, they take the order. Okay? None of this can happen unless you teach them the retailing method in here, basic five. Right? Unless you get them to identify what they're selling, get them to get a case of it, use it, and then match up for them the merchandising method that they're going to use to expose that product. Each person in the group needs that, don't they? Mm -hmm. Then what happens? You're just not selling $200 applications where people are coming in. There's now a focus on that product turning over, and they know how to do it. Plus, they have all the other products, so when someone wants a water filter, <coughs> they're going to say, I can get you a water filter. When someone wants some jewelry, say, you ought to look at my jewelry. They're not out selling that stuff. They're taking orders. They're selling out of the store that they're the expert in. And they become an, and once they become an expert in one store, with the, knowing the benefits and special features of the product, price justification, uh, how to overcome objections, they can move on to the second store if they like. But you should not let anyone go on into business unless they have bought a, a case of a particular type of product, started using it, identified the merchandising methods, 
and start selling the product. They'll amaze themselves. I got a guy who's a multi-millionaire. He went out and uh, uh, sold a, a large rug manufacturing facility. Okay, then went into infomercials. Okay, now this guy doesn't need to go out selling. He, in the beginning, laughed at the business. You know, I said, Marty's just making deals. Okay. Well, he started playing around with the body mate bar, passing it out. People came back and ordered it. Well, he was absolutely flabbergasted. He said, this is unbelievable. Okay? Somebody came back because his wife had a nail bonding kit and ordered the nail bonding kit. All of a sudden, here's this guy that you know, is worth millions okay? <clears throat> and thought that this was a party plan, silly dilly thing, saying the tremendous potential of it, not only that we can make a lot of money by getting in, but there's a base of reordering if we duplicate this process. And that income is, is added to, so that 327000 if we follow your marketing plan it, with our people and everything, this money, that these uh, bonus volume, I guess is what you call it, this that's an addition that's to on the 327000 It builds on top of it, okay. correct. And what it does is it, it creates a constant flow of it so it doesn't go away. In other words, next year, let's suppose you put a thousand people in your organization in a year. Do you want to have to keep putting another thousand people in? No. You'd like to be able to retire. Okay? <laughs> if everybody's selling product, you don't have to worry about it. Does that make sense? Uh, you, and we have, we have customers. Okay, the, the fourth thing is recruiting. Okay? And again, I mean, I don't, each one of these areas you can hold a whole seminar on. Okay. The way I see the business, it's kind of like a funnel. And we put people in at the top of the funnel, and we have no way of knowing if they're going to be right for the business. My notion is people that seem right quite often aren't. <laughs> people that you think are going to do it don't, and people who, who you think aren't going to do it do it. How many people have experienced that? You just can't play God with them. So to me, it's simply a numbers game. I'm very, very callous. I just go through them. I don't care what they say. I have what I call a no quotient. Okay? The higher my no quotient, the closer I am to success. Okay? The more no's I can get, I know I'm closer to a yes because it's all probability. If you go to the, the casino and roll the crap but never lose your money, but just keep rolling and only get paid when you win, wouldn't it be wonderful? That's what we have here. Man, you can roll and roll and roll and roll and roll, but your, your chips never go away. Does everyone understand that? Okay? It's, you, you just have to have enough numbers. Some will be positive, and some will be negative, and some will give referrals. Now, the way I look at the business, I don't care if anyone does it. All I know is this. Every single person I talk to knows someone who would do it. This is big. This is a biggie. Everybody that I talk to, I am not even interested in them doing it. I've conditioned myself to do this. I want to know who they know that would do it. Okay? I'm always trying to get the guy out of Ray or Dennis or whoever I'm working with or talking to who would do it. Now, first of all, if I get that person in and going, they're in anyway. Okay? Uh, but if each one of you took the people that you know and got five people that they knew from them that you could work with and they didn't mess it up, you'd have 50 people to work with rather than 10, and you'd be a lot more likely to succeed. And those 50, I don't care if they do it either. All I want to know is who do they know. Because I know everybody knows one executive coordinator. So I'm always working to get the good person out of you rather than get you. Does that make sense? Yeah, guys, I really don't have time to do this. But I know you don't have time to do it. You know, you're, but one thing that you do have is credibility. People listen to you. And it takes three things to make this thing go. A good company a powerful marketing plan that people can make money with, with good products, and someone who knows what to do. Now, I know what to do, and I know that you don't have the time, okay? <clears throat> but we can work out a mutualization where if you could identify some of the right people, and they were interested, okay, <clears throat> we'd work out something where you got compensated. All I want you to do is sit down and help me run it up the flagpole in front of some people. And what am I doing? Okay? He'll be in anyway if the two people get in. <laughs> I could care less. Of it. I don't spend my time trying to convince people to, to, to do it. But I want to keep the funnel filled. The fastest way to keep the funnel filled is to get everybody to lead to some people real quick for me to talk to, to test market it. The guy says, I don't know if I can do this. Say, let's test market it. 
Just run it up the flagpole in front of some people, see if they salute it. If they do, then you have no reason not to get in. I have no reason to take you on. But I'll tell you the truth. At this point, I don't know if I want to take you on because I don't know if you'll do what it takes. Okay? But I know it's worth test marketing. And that way I can tell if you're coachable and if it'll work. Okay? And you'll get to see if the business does work. All I want them to do is lead to the right people to me. I mean, I find the fast, fastest way to recruit is through other people for you. I don't care if, they, if he gets into. He led me to someone who would. Is, is this making any sense? Yeah, Big focus on it for me, I'll tell you. Okay, so it's a funnel. Now, what happens is, is the people who are going to get in, okay, and the people who commit and the people who become executive coordinators pop out the bottom. So many will get in, so many will, be, will commit, and so many will become executive coordinators, start popping out the bottom. I just keep pouring them in the funnel. Yes. Yeah, I spend all my time on more, 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 more. And I don't play God. And I don't play psychologists or psychiatrists with people. I let water seek its own level. Okay? I used to do a demonstration. wish I had it here today. Yeah, I have a big jar. Dennis, you need to get one of these. big jar of, of beans. And inside the, the, the jar are six walnuts. You can't see them, though. And I said, I'm going to explain to you how, how to build the business. I take the jar and just start shaking it. Shaking it. After about 20 shakes, there's six nuts sitting up at the top. <laughs> I, that, you know, of course, the moral is the biggest nuts always make it. Okay? But all you got to do, all you do is shake it up. What are we doing here today? We're just shaking it up, aren't we? There's nothing real profound here today. We're just shaking it up, and that's all you do. You shake it up, and the ones that are going to do it rise to the top. Okay? All you have to do is tie the knot when you get frustrated and commit to staying in long enough so the jar's sh shaking long enough so you find the right people. Make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay. <laughs> now, if we understand this, we need to understand the next thing. There should be no hesitation in talking to people about this business. You know why? First, you believe you have the right attitude and knowledge, but I'm going to tell you something. You cannot say the right thing to the wrong person. And you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. I'm, I'm telling you, you can get good at the business and you can get better, but if someone is wrong for the business, is not ready mentally, has a preconceived notion, is hostile, I don't care how good you are. You're not going to turn them. Okay? But now, a year later, their perspective may be different. Okay? And you can't, by the same token, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. If the guy's curious or interested or looking, even though he may be negative on the front side, even though he may be a bull, uh, you know, what do you mean? Sounds like a pyramid to me. Anything he asks, you answer the question, he asks more. Well, how does that work? Why is it different? Before you know it, he gets in, and I know something about this plan. If they start working on the figures, and they get it. They get. They put. Give it too much attention. They're in trouble because it, it's, it's going to mess their mind up. That's what we. When we go out recruiting, we say we we'll go out and wreck some people. <laughs> we'll mess their minds up. <laughs> okay. And that's all we do. We sit and talk. And the deeper they get in, the more questions they ask, the more of their little resistance that we overcome just by letting them walk into the trap. Okay. We we got them. So what I'm trying to say is, you can't say the wrong thing to to, to the right person. So all you need is numbers. And if the person is wrong, you can't say the right thing. So quit blaming yourself. I mean, you're not that much better than myself or Dennis. We probably just talk to more people. Does that make any sense? Okay. So you, you, you got to talk. Now, there's only three things people can talk about. This is a tremendous realization. They can talk about, one, what's happening. Well, I would think. Now, you go out on the golf course around here and talk to someone. You get in conversations all the time, don't you? Okay. What do people talk about? What's happening? Oh, nice day out today. Extra income. We got some extra income. Need to pay that way. Give a tape back. Can't say the wrong thing to the right person. <laughs> people talk about what's happening, or they talk about how rotten things are. Think about this real hard. Or they talk about what they wish they could have, the way they wish things were. I maintain that if a person talks about what's happening more than three to five minutes, they always end up talking about how rotten things are or the way they wish things were. Think about it. Test it out. Now, I can't help that they brought the business up. 
It's not my fault that the guy, you know, wishes he could quit his job and go play golf every day because it's a nice day out. Geez, I used to feel the same way. I sure am glad I found something. Now it's up to him. He takes the next step. What's he doing? He's walking into the trap. What do you mean? So oh, you want to be interested. You've got a good job. You like it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, tell me about this. I've known you for three years. Uh, I said, i got to keep it a secret. I mean, it gets out, you'll mess it up. <laughs> 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 Besides that, I can only take two people on. I got 16 people online. <laughs> well, how come you didn't tell me about it? You're busy, man. <laughs> and before I know it, he's calling me up. You know? Said, well, what is it? Say, you really want to know? Stop by my house tomorrow afternoon. Don't worry, I won't call you. <laughs> some, someone finally said to me, he said, you're just using opposite psychology. Say, is that what it is? Still works. <laughs> Okay, you know, and uh, it does work. But my point is that we all try to find very systematic methodologies for recruiting. I'm telling you, the greatest gold mine, the acres of diamonds, are right under your feet, all around you. Everywhere you go, every day, you're going to bump into people that would do this business. Now, I, I'm not saying that we don't want to also have me methodical systems. Okay? But sometimes people concentrate so much on methodical systems for re recruiting, they miss the greatest opportunity all around you. And you don't even have to bring it up. They bring it up. Uh, the only thing that you need is, is and to train. Now, this is duplication again. We need to train people on two things. One is the answer to what is it. Now, along with that goal statement, one thing that I do in the group is I get everyone to work on their answer to what is it and commit it to a little three-by-five card. Because when you think about it, last time you wanted to bring the business up, why didn't you bring it up? Why did you hesitate? Now, really be honest. The reason is that you were afraid of what they were going to ask you. Isn't that the honest of God truth? And you didn't know how to answer. Well, what am I going to say? And when we drill people on the answer to what is it? What is it? What do you do? What's it about? And you can come back just like that. You're recruiting in your group, source through the roof. So are we making sense? Hey, basic five, attitude knowledge, goals, right? R retailing, recruiting, little things like this. When they start to duplicate, you've got to go now a person that's going to grow. You're going to hit those checks. So whose responsibility is it to sit people down and do this? What's the answer to what is it? We go and do a workshop here in your leadership training. You have these meetings weekly. One could be com committed to the answers to what is it. Everyone's working on it, brainstorming, role-playing, writing it down. You got them, then you do them with your group. You don't walk away, oh, that's nice, I don't know the answer to what is it. You should be foaming at the mouth to get out of here and get your group together at your house to conduct your own little coring or training on the answer to what is it. So are we getting this? Are you getting yes. the drift of this yet? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the mastermind group. You guys are the executives. This is the board. You come together to create these things. I could do it with you today, but we'll run out of time. Okay? Uh, and, you know, you, you need more for later. But that's it. So what is it? What's the, the other thing is, the second thing that we work on is a two-minute commercial. Okay? We tell everyone that you should have a two-minute commercial. Can you tell me what you do? And we get everyone to come up in front of the room and do a two-minute commercial. I recently become involved in a, in a, a new venture that's just coming into the area. We like to equate it to what happened in, in the 40s, okay, in direct selling. In the 50s, franchising emerged. In the 60s and 70s, multi-level marketing emerged. In the 80s, infomercials emerged. This is the new market form. If I was to tell you uh, about franchises in 1950, you'd have no idea what I was talking about. Okay? Today, you do. If I told you about an infomercial in 1960, you'd have no idea what I'm talking about. We have identified the next marketing trend and market form in this country called binary business development centers. Okay. It's extremely powerful. It taps the power of, of direct sales, home shopping, discount buying, network marketing, franchising, and eliminates their weaknesses. And we're looking for two key people to, uh, to work in this area. We have a product brokerage company that identifies marketing trends. We use infomercials and a binary business development plan to merchandise the product on a mass scale. I just made that up as I went along. But you, all, you start doing this, I mean, you're, you're rocking and rolling pretty soon. You got it's clicking and you feel comfortable on your feet. But you got to drill your people. 
And then when they hear you saying it and teaching this, it gets in their subconscious. They start telling their people, and it starts to, to happen. But I don't believe in getting up in front of the room and giving you candid sources. So what does it come down to? It comes down to sources. We need sources to fill the funnel. Okay? The more sources you have, the better off you are. I teach people that we do not have a prospect list. What we work on is a possibility list. Who is a possibility for this business? If I can add two to four possibilities per day, I'm going to be in good shape because things start happening when I write them down. When I, when I identified Dennis, who I met at, at, at the, the, the mail service, okay, I met him there one time. Man, that guy's pretty sharp. I write him down as a possibility. You know what happens? Next time I go to mailboxes and he's there, I talk to him a little bit further. I'm trying to lead the conversation a little bit. He's asking me about what I do. I don't tell him it. Next time I come, they say, hey, Jim, how's that business doing? I won't believe it, Dennis. I mean, I just, unbelievable. I got started on this a month ago. I'm already getting checks for $1,500 a week. Well, what is, what am I doing? I'm cultivating a possibility into a prospect. Okay, but I need the possibilities to get prospects. You want to be successful? Don't worry about who you're getting in, because you don't got anyone to get in. You would have them in right now, right? You're all worried about, I ain't got nobody in. You're worried about it. Just worry about possibilities. We work on the possibility to get a prospect list. Out of the prospect list, and that's the guy who's responding, like I just went through with Dennis. He moves from the possibility list to the prospect list. This is management, folks. Daily, weekly. I do this all the time. Lawrence says I'm crazy with all my list. List, 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 list. Now, who I'm going to call back. Who I'm calling next week. You know, who I got to contact. Who's a possibility. Who's a prospect. My top ten list. My top ten targets in the downline. Who do I want to work with to generate more volume? This is what it's all about. It's management. It's not exclusive to this business. Okay, my prospect list. Out of that, I get my top ten list. And notice how I'm creating all these little functional things that you can check on for duplication. What was one of them? The goal statement, right? What was another one? They got tickets, so they're coming to the seminar, right? The only thing you do is, do they got a tape? Okay, another one was the, the answer to what is it on a card. Can't you sit down with your people and get that on a card? You tired of being frustrated? Hmm? What's the difference between success and failure? An individual who succeeds does what the individual who fails doesn't do. If you go do it, where are you going to be? If you don't do it, where are you going to be? Top ten list. Another thing, when they come over to the house with the goal statement in their little book or whatever, they say, let me check your top ten list and see who we can work on. I don't have it. You don't have it. What about the, the yacht that you're going to get at the end of this year? What about your kid's tuition? Man, you know, let's get down, down to it. You know, when you come back Wednesday, have it, and we'll talk about recruiting some of these people. What do I keep doing? I keep putting the onus back on them, right? Well, otherwise, what happens? That is, nothing's happening. How come I don't have any people? I've been in three months and I haven't made any money. Well, you dumb Denny, you didn't do anything. <laughs> but you see, I didn't, you didn't set them up for that, though, did you? See, I haven't set up for that, okay? Where's your top ten list? Where's your goal statement? Where's this? Where's that? No wonder you're not succeeding. I mean, again, I mean, I'm being a little arrogant up here. Right? You don't come across arrogant. You come across sincere and, and business-like. But uh, it works, I'm telling you. And it gives you the ability to measure, monitor, control. What do you want? Control. Okay? And it gives you control. Okay, sources. Let's go on, man. This, this is where, where it's all at. We have uh, to de develop the sources. we got a name list. Now, everybody knows about a name list. Why would you dare bring someone into this business and get them started if they didn't have 25 to 50 names written down on a piece of paper? That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Where are they going to start? And we cultivate working on a name list. You know, there's these lists in here in the career manual to, to jog their memory. Okay? All different things. Where do you get this done? Where do you get that done? Who do you know from here? Who do you know from there? So that they can jog their memory. And that starts the creative flow. The next thing that we concentrate on is referrals. And I teach this. Okay, Dennis, maybe you can help me out. I recently become involved in a new business. I'm looking for some people that know the area real good, well, that have good business minds, that are promoters. Okay, <clears throat> that help organize this business in the area. And if you can help me identify some of them, there could be we could work out something that'd be mutually profitable. I'm never trying to get Dennis in. I'm trying to get Dennis to give me some names. Well, naturally, I say naturally, Dennis. I understand that you're not going to be willing to give me some quality referrals unless you know a little bit more about it yourself. So how about we sit down Wednesday, okay, and I'll, I'll show you basically what this company's all about. 
Well, he's not coming to be have his arm twisted, is he? Does everyone understand that? People love to help. And people love to be complimented and have their ego stroke that they are in a position to do this for you. And the more successful they are, the better. You want to build fast? I try to find three types of people. People with money, people with power or management authority, okay, and, and people that have MLM experience. Okay, why? You can start at the bottom and get all the people who need it, and you got to take them through all this psychological development. No one will listen to them. The reason I start at the top is everybody will listen to them. The guy knows that he can get people in. That's not a question. So I look for people with money, because if they made money, people will listen to them. Okay? I look for people with management authority or some type of authority where they are in charge of other people. Why? People listen to them. Or I look for someone with MLM experience because they already have a network. And, it, and it, it's faster. And then everybody else joins anyway. Make sense? Okay. Uh, the next one is MLM people. I look for MLM. I admit it. They're starving. They're killing themselves. Who got the answer? Why not? I mean, in real estate, you look for other real estate agents, right? In MLM, why don't we look for other MLM? Sure. Well, uh, the other thing I do is I look for MLM ads in the newspaper. I love those little suckers. <laughs> you can always tell one. They'll promise you a world and tell you nothing. <laughs> right? I just call them up and I tell them that I'm evaluating the marketplace. <laughs> that I, you know, I've looked at several businesses and I've become interested in network marketing and direct sales. This apparently is one. And I'm, I'm evaluating what's out there. I decided he's going to get in, but what's he doing? Ooh, I got somebody. <laughs> Can't wait to sell the point. I come over and I listen. I say, you know, John, I've looked at several plans. This is very interesting, but let me ask you some questions. Okay, this is a Royce McCoy routine. Mm -hmm. you, you were at the seminar, you heard it. Okay. Can I make $100,000 a year with just two legs and no side volume in this program? Can you show me how to do that? Because I found a program that I can do it. What are they doing? Walking into the trap. Right? Does that make sense? So that, I mean, it's another source you can do something with. Ads. Okay. You know what I look at, at ads? My own ads as? Extra people. <coughs> I always want extra people to work on. And they're great to practice on because they came to you. I don't know them. All I'm going to do is lose 50 to $100 maximum, great education, and I may get somebody. And you know what happens? You end up getting good. Now, you have that $500,000 business that we talked about before. How much are you going to put into advertising there? I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably. And you're complaining about running a hundred dollar ad? Well, what's wrong with us? Where's our, our thinking? Oh, <clears throat> loosen up a little bit. You've lost more money in other things. You're now in deeper than you can get out anyway. <laughs> right? You might as well try some of these things. And it's fun. And I, you know, the best ad I ever had, I ran in the Wall Street Journal, I had five people show up and they all became field managers in another company, all, you know, direct. But and, uh, and, and advertising is an experiment. It's exper you experiment until you find something that works, but you get people. And if you're implementing the referral technique, even the ones that you get, and they don't like it, they don't like it. Why? Because they think it's multi-level. True? That's why I always win. As soon as they come on that, I don't try to talk them out of it. I say, Phil, look, I understand you don't like this type of thing, but obviously you have been influenced or known or been connected with someone who has been an MLM. And they probably bothered you and annoyed you, right? <laughs> what do you say? Right? So, may I make a recommendation? I don't want you to get into this. I understand where you're coming from. Okay? Why don't we identify those people? Okay? I'll talk to them. Uh, and if they do become involved, I'll give you credit for them, and you'll make $2,100 per week. Just do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I tell you that. That has worked every time. You know why? They don't like those people in the first place. That's right. They wouldn't get Someone them. who's concerned about giving a referral, why? They don't want you to, to, to jeopardize their relationship with the person, right? Because they don't want you to impose on them and make that person feel ill towards the individual who referred them. Isn't that true? Right. Don't happen with the MLM people. Go get them. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I call up and say, John, you know, a mutual acquaintance of ours, Dennis Frank, suggested that I give you a call. Got, you know, already a uh, common ground there. And it's the easiest walk-in you'd ever want to see. So sure, I run ads. They're either going to get in or be negative. If they're negative, I know why they're negative. It's because they think it's MLM. 
in their mind. I'm not going to spend 45 hours overcoming that. Fine, fine, you win. Who do you know that's an ML, MLM that's giving you this impression? And go get them. Okay, we're coming down to the yeah, front stretch. If you could take maybe the next five or ten minutes to wrap her up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last thing. The last thing in this process is follow-up. Okay? Now, the rule, and this is a rule at the meeting, you never bring somebody to a meeting, you never show the plan without doing what? Booking. Booking a follow-up. Okay? It's either a meeting for them, where they can get a few people together, and how do you show it? You don't need to do what Dennis does. You take the little slideshow. You know what's great about that? They say, ooh, I can do that. You take the flip chart. You act stupid. When you get too slick, they don't think they can do it. Okay? <clears throat> and then, then they start knowing. And you build up the upline. Now, here's a little pattern that I use. And you're not going to get this all now, but I just want you to be aware of it. If you start doing it, I'll keep coming back and helping you fine-tune this part of it. This is the, what I call the ABC method of building debt. And what it results in is hundreds of people showing the plan. How would you like to have 100 meetings a week in your group? Okay? I'll tell you, this is the only way that it'll ever happen. But you can't, it, it takes a little bit of work. And it's going to look like a lot, but I'm going to tell you, it adds up to two nights a week. If you're willing to commit two nights a week to doing this, okay, you'll, you'll, you'll put in place something that's ongoing. Now, just because you're using your two nights a week to do what I'm showing you here doesn't mean that you stop recruiting. I'm going to tell you this up front because as you watch it, I want you to think about this. When I'm doing these meetings that I'm going to be showing you in depth and getting other people to hold meetings, I bring my prospect with me. You know what's great? When I'm holding a meeting for Dennis and he's new and he's got three or four people there, and I take Bill and bring him along with me as my prospect. First of all, you know, I got somebody else going, so I'm probably growing. I may have just gotten in Scott. And, and I want to teach him how to follow up. So they say, Scott, you know, we need to get together, go over your goals, we'll have some coffee beforehand, do that. Why don't you come along with me to the meeting? So I pick Scott up, I have him, I come to the meeting now, i got two guys on my side, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dennis is excited, all these other people don't know these people, puts me in better control, I'm building three legs at once, but I'm going to build this pattern I'm showing you down in depth. But I never break stride on my own personal recruiting or following up with my other groups. In other words, you should strive to be working three spots or three legs a night, no matter what location you're in. Does this make sense to you? Try to remember, remember this, because when you're working this pattern, you're going to be thinking, I'm going to run out of time. No. You use this pattern to do your other work, and it just makes it that much stronger. Okay, so here's the way it works. you got a sponsor, right? Okay, got a sponsor, and we have a local meeting that's booked whether it be Dennis's opportunity meetings or a big seminar or a convention, right? right? Okay. Here's you. You just got in. You bring your first two people. It could be to a meeting or it could be to your house. doesn't matter, okay? This is person A and person A on your two legs. Okay, what happens is, is your sponsor with you books a follow-up with A at A's location. Okay? Time-consuming, isn't it? But I have to give birth to this mechanism. And it's gonna it'll take some time in the beginning. But I can bring somebody else with me to that follow-up if I want. It's very powerful, you see? Or I can bring another one of my guys that I'm following up with to that meeting. Okay? And it puts me in, in control and I'm teaching everybody at once. Okay? That sponsor goes to A with you. Alright. So I would say Dennis. Dennis would, would book the meeting, okay, for Scott at his house, and he would, you would tell me, I want you to come with me, okay? And so we're going to go now to Scott's house. Now, what happened before? We got Scott's check, he disappeared, right? But then we call him 45 times to get him back to the next meeting. Meanwhile, his uncle told him that it would saturate, right? Well, watch the difference here. Now, B, A now brings B, right? There may be two Bs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter... If, if there's three A's here. There may be three A's that, that in here before someone picks up the pattern. You understand what I mean? It doesn't, this is like a football play. When you draw a football play out, you score a touchdown every time if it worked the way it's supposed to work. The thing is, there's resistance, and everyone doesn't perform to expectation, right? But you make progress if you run the play right. 
you make five yards, ten yards. Okay? All he wants first downs here. Okay? Now, when B comes, okay, now you, excuse me, your sponsor is going to go to B's meeting with you and A. Okay, watch this now. When at B's meeting, your sponsor is going to go to C and you're going to go with them. If A or B will come, they come. If they don't, they're not picking up the pattern. I don't worry about it. I'm going to be where the, the heat is, the action is. Okay, this is a first down. <laughs> And when we get to here. Now, I have now seen the plan, been to follow up, a second meeting, a third meeting. You think I can click the, the slide projector or do the flip chart now? Okay. Dennis now leaves me alone. He's done his job. And he's doing the same thing down this side. Now, if you have a current organization, you can start this pattern anywhere down in your two legs. Okay. And remember, I'm not limiting my other activity. I'm bringing people with me to the meetings. I'm doing new recruiting. I'm doing follow-up. But they got to come with me. I mess their minds up really. You work the crazy. You work this guy against this guy. I mean, you just well, you get good at this. It just blows them away. Okay, now I wish I could be back out here every night. This is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, and if anything goes wrong, I don't worry. I just pick up the pattern where I can pick it up. Now watch this very carefully. I now, under Dennis's instructions, book the meeting with A1, the next level. I'm going to do this ABC pattern all over again. Who do you think is coming with me? C. Okay. C comes with me, B may come with me, and A may come with me. Whoever is picking up the pattern. Okay. Because if, if A was doing this with C, then... A is coming down here to become me on this level. You follow? Right now, I've taken over what Dennis has taken over on this level. Soon, A, B, or C, one of them, one of the three, is going to take it over on the next level. Everyone with me? Okay, now watch. I, I come down then. We book it with B1, and A1 comes with us. Okay? And so does A, B, C, or all of them. They all don't. But see, what's going to happen is there's going to be other legs coming off of here, so they're going to have to start splitting up. But the pattern is the same. Everyone follow that? It'll, it'll just come naturally to you if you understand one leg. In other words, if this starts off here, naturally B may be going down here and A may be going down here and C with you. But the idea is, whoever is available comes to the next meeting. I book the meeting. He don't know how to book the meeting. Okay? And I tell him to come with me. So we work this three times. Okay? Then, on this level, A2, B2, C2, Okay, uh, this guy here, A, is now going to each of the meetings with A1, B1, C1. Does that make sense? The person at this level took over what I was doing on this level that Dennis was doing on this level. Everyone see how the pattern duplicates and repeats? Now, what does Dennis do? At every meeting, we talk about the upline. Okay, I want you to know that we have the strongest line of leadership in the company. We have the most powerful people behind us. We've got Ray Schultz, my upline, Dennis Franks is his upline, you know, with Alpha Energy Group, da 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 These guys have done this in their life, da 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 They're gods. Now what Dennis does is once a month, month one, month two, watch, this is week one, week two, week three. You're doing a meeting here and here, okay? Everyone with that? That's two nights, right? There's one other night every two weeks, the meeting. What are we doing? We're selling tickets at all these meetings, aren't we? Okay. Everybody's coming back to the meeting, and we're training them to bring two people in their car. Whether they were at the meeting or they're new prospects, depending on where they are. Everyone brings the people back to the meeting. It's a second look. That's the show where all of Dennis's stars get up. The credibility happens. The belief, oh, there's other people in this besides me. They come back to their meetings. I met a doctor. I met Ray Schultz. I met Dennis Franks. I met this person. You see what we're doing? It's a generator. Okay. But what, if you just wait for all these people to bring people back to this meeting, nothing's ever going to happen, and everyone's going to depend on you to do all the work. Here in the pattern, they're picking up the work. But now, Dennis comes back in for me. In the next month, see, there's week one, two, three. And I, I, actually, there's four weeks per month. I do know that. But you're going to miss a week. Okay? Second month, one, two, three. Okay? He comes back in in the hottest spot on this level. There's going to be some action starting. Maybe they're starting to have their little hotel meeting. 
the star comes back in and does the magic show. But he, what's he doing? He's getting down in depth. Okay? The next month, he comes down on the hottest spot on the third level. Well, what do you think I do after A picks up this? Huh? A's picking this up, this. Now, I come in here for one meeting in the hottest spot, okay? And the next month here. Well, soon, A on the next level will be doing that. So we have the leaders who have been projected as the experts coming down in the hot spot on each level of the group, pushing that duplication further. Then, we, they, if they go to this meeting, they get to go to the leadership meeting. If they met certain criteria, we tell them about being a leader. And this is where we train them on starting to duplicate the same process. Okay? The second look <coughs> is being pushed throughout this whole thing. Bring two people to the meeting. When you get to the door, you compliment them if they got their two people. How many people brought two people tonight? See? And we reward them. And you guys, even though you got to get Aunt Sally and your mother-in-law to come with you. Took <laughs> 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 me out of my calm life. Well, he's a leader, right? <laughs> you had to make me a leader again. But even if you got to pay somebody to come with you, you need to, by example, show your group that you brought two people there. That everybody's bringing two people. So you always show up with two people at the meeting, and we train them all to do that. Now we're all done, but the point is simply this. We teach people then, through the leadership training, like we did here, to do the same thing. What does that mean? They go back and they teach their people attitude and knowledge, goals, retail, prospecting, okay, and the follow-up, the follow-up and the follow-up pattern, okay? And we evaluate each month who's go now, who's stable, who's waiting. If they're not doing the pattern, they're not doing the basic five, they're not go now. I need what? More new people concentrate on new people, plug them into the system so that they don't die on the vine, okay, and I keep going. And we keep moving down in depth to find new spots to do the same thing. And now you've got a generator that builds for the long term. That's how it's done. That's how I did it anyway.